What is going on everyone? How are you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Today I am here with a video on my free to play to main account, which we are currently kind of chilling on. This is an account that I've been building in a series recently where I basically I took it from a level three free to play account and made it a main account that I can buy bonds with and I've never paid for membership at all. Basically I've just been building up in game cash and at somewhat med of a level I have around a 25 to 30 mil bank at the moment. Now I necessarily haven't been focusing the most on cash. I could definitely have more if I wanted but I've been trying to build a well-rounded account. And ultimately, while cash isn't everything in old school RuneScape, I know that a lot of lower level people like to build it up. They like to see that as their accomplishment. And today I'm gonna throw out some tips in this video that I think can help a lot of you that are a little bit more low to med level be able to start to gather a larger cash stack. So not all of these tips you have to implement. Personally, there'll be a few on this list that I don't do because I don't enjoy them. At the end of the day, it's a game, so and do what you enjoy, but these are my tips to getting a bigger cash stack. So getting into tip number one, I will say that most of these tips will be members based. Um, if you're a free to play player looking for a little bit of advice, make sure to check out the early part of this series where I got a bond on my own in free to play. Definitely gonna help you out a lot more than I can in this video. But for those of you that are members, the first tip is do as many uh, daily runs as possible. Now this can be a variety of things. Some examples would be high alking where basically you just buy things that maybe have a low amount of buys per day four hours, for example, like green dehyde bodies, any dehyde bodies, you can alk some of these for profit. And if you do it every four hours, then you can definitely look to make 30 to 40K pretty easily and get some free mage XP. And if you do it a few times a day, it could be another 100K a day, depending on how much you keep up with this type of stuff. Now, a couple other examples could be herb runs that are going to definitely make you some good money. So I highly recommend those. Buying herb boxes from Nightmare Zone is another one. Now this one is kind of one that you get more passively, but it's definitely good to go do them, buying daily battle staffs if you have the Varrock Diaries done at all, and I mean, even birdhouses that are unlocked at a fairly low hunter level are also very good. These are going to be actions that you can't do all the time, so it will kind of vary up the game for you a little bit, make it make it fresh, I believe. But in addition to that, there's some of the better GP per hour methods. Now, obviously, you can't do them in long spurts, but even if you can do them in a short amount of time, over the span of a few weeks to a month, that really does add up. The second tip is going to be one that is great for skillers, and that is, yeah, is skilling first really is probably the best way to go about playing runes. Honestly, uh, there are some very profitable skills like wood cutting, not the most profit definitely, but more so rune crafting and hunter. Those are very, very profitable. Just doing skills that you enjoy that also make you some side cash are really beneficial because if you're trying to get 99 of a skill at some point and you can do it early on into an account where you're going to get side cash that you can use elsewhere, that's so much more beneficial than getting 99, you know, once you've already built a bank. It, it really has a lot less of a meaning. But if you build your bank with that 99, then you're just playing the game the absolute right way. I know it's not fun, so for people like me, this isn't really how I approach the game. I can't do 99 Hunter, I can't do 99 Runecrafting. I just, I just can't. For those of you that like to skill, it's definitely a good approach to the game and I'd highly recommend it. But if you're like me and you don't really care for it, I understand. Tip number three we'll go through real quick because I say it in as many videos as I can, and that is to flip or merge. Basically, uh, just take advantage of the Grand Exchange, the margins in the Grand Exchange. If you know how to invest, you can do that as well, but if you have a low cash deck, I'd say probably don't invest. Just, just stick to flipping. If you need to look up a guide on that, I will provide one in the link in the description to one place where I, I give a good overview, I'd say. But basically, I mean, flipping is, is another daily almost. It is a daily that you can just make a little bit of money with the money that you have and over time it just gets better and better it's not for everyone but if you don't mind or you want to give it a try definitely would recommend so tip number four is one that i really it, it may not save you money it may not help build your cash stack but it will save you time which essentially is money uh, ultimately <laughs> the tip is to try efficiency what i mean by this is look at the game in an aspect of both skilling xp and GP. I think that, I mean, those are the two main ways to perceive this game, however you want to go about it. And as long as you don't care about one a lot more than the other, and you think they're relatively comparable, then compare them accurately. Uh, I do a lot of stuff with efficiency, and I know that it's kind of like a, a crazy thing once you get to the end game. A lot of people are crazy about it, but early on, there are some easy things you can do. One example would be, once you unlock Red Chinchampas, if you go there and do some Hunter, I don't know the rates necessarily, but I know it's pretty poor. Say maybe you're getting 
getting 30k hunter xp per hour and you're making a couple hundred k gp i mean ultimately it's nice to be able to make some money but if you were to do a hunter method that was maybe 50 to 60k xp per hour and you're getting no gp it's going to be way more worth it for you to do that hunter method because the quicker you can get hunter done the quicker you can get to making some money and ultimately you just save yourself the time of doing a skill that isn't that great just because it makes you a little bit of money in the end i think it's way better to try and weigh that out if you can be asked to do it if you can't who cares so when you're building a cash stack what are you thinking about you're, you're thinking of goals you know you want to hit 1 mil you want to hit 10 mil but to think bigger than that if you plan on playing runescape for a while and you really want to build as big of a cash stack as you can you can't get caught up in the low level money makers uh, ultimately the tip is don't save too much cash don't try and build too much uh, at, at low levels uh, if you're under 80 or 90 combat you're never going to need more than 5 to 10 mil for the most part i mean you know you could try to go all out on some gear you could try to do some stuff but ultimately money isn't everything the best thing for you is to try to build your skills build your account which will eventually unlock you even better money makers that way you can do money makers that are going to be more worth your time than just trying to build a massive cash stack at the start that ultimately probably won't last you too long because as you start to progress your character up you'll notice that some of the gear costs and some of the armor gets pretty extreme real quick so Whatever you've built up as a low level may not be that significant at that point. You kind of got to rely on what you have unlocked then. And so a great alternative out of just being able to uh, get as much cash as you can is tip number six, and that is to do Slayer. Uh, ultimately, Slayer is one of my favorite skills, which is why I promote it so heavily, but I do think it really acclimates players to the game, shows them a lot of different monsters, and gives them a lot of, you know, different combat situations to be in it really builds up your overall experience in the game and in addition to that you're able to get some good gp uh it won't necessarily be anything crazy but over time you will unlock a lot of monsters that are going to make you a ton of money and if you don't do it early it's going to seem really dumb if you come back and do slayer once you've already gained your combat because everything's just going to be so out of your league so i think if you're looking to invest in your account and try to build your combat slayer is way to go with it tip number seven is going to be for those of you that may actually have a little bit of cash and are looking to skill uh, i will say spend as needed basically uh whenever you have cash and you want to get up some skills that may require it for example crafting prayer herb lore stuff like that construction maybe only go for those upgrades when you absolutely need them do not go for them in advance to try to knock them out of the way personally uh, i actually got 70 prayer pretty early on into my account thinking it'd be more useful but then i realized like any task i go on i'm not using this uh so I, i'm really just i spent that money for nothing and instead i could have had that money over time just to be able to flip do some side stuff and make more money with it but instead uh, i just threw it into a skill that it took me about a month to a month and a half to be able to actually use on a somewhat regular basis so that's one example but obviously this applies to many other scenarios to so try to think it through ahead of time tip number eight is to check out player owned houses and uh not your own but other people's if you go to world 330 you'll find that this is the world that people host houses in remington so if you go down there you can enter people's houses and if you don't know what's going on in there that's perfectly fine just run around take in the sites and kind of look up stuff on the wiki and see what you can learn there's honestly a ton of things in these houses that are meant for high level players and since they let other people in you know you can kind of get access to some things that are pretty game changing uh one thing for example that i did was i was utilizing house teleports to teleport into the wildy for a money making method i couldn't unlock this teleport at the time because i didn't have desert treasure done so that was pretty cool in addition to that you can make teleport tabs and there's really a lot of things you can do in other people's houses so just give it a look it'll save you time because a lot of these construction things that are useful are pretty high level in constructions and expensive skills so it can save you some money and it can boost some things that you do at low level so why not go give it a check tip number nine getting close to the end of the video is questing this is one that uh, i do but i i try not to do as much as i can but i know it i know it's just good questing is much like slayer i mean really what you're doing with questing is you're building your account for the future 
there's a ton of high level content. Yeah, I mean, even med and low level content locked behind quests. And really, if you can do that early on, you're going to see so much of a use out of a lot of these quests. They really do progress your account. I mean, something as simple as fairy rings is an absolute game changer. You can teleport all around the world um, to set, I mean, just an absolute ton of locations that you never could before. And that's just one example. I mean, questing unlocks bosses and just so many things that it's a necessity. And Barrow's Gloves is such a high achievement that it is really a thing to work for if you need to to build your cash stack you have to invest in the future uh i know it may not be what you want to hear and it's not what i want to hear but it just is the truth uh just by doing as much quest as you can you definitely unlock all of the possibilities of content which will ultimately maximize your profit so the last tip of the video is to diversify your money making methods personally uh, i upload money making videos a lot and in the comments i hear Eh, you're gonna, you ruined my money making method. How am I gonna feed my kids? I get it, you know, I mean, it's hard, but you should have at least three to four money makers that you like to do on a regular basis because not only could one of them be ruined, but you could also just have margins that are constantly changing. Charging glories in the wilderness could make me on some days 800K an hour or some days 2 mil an hour. It really just depends on the margins. And if I'm gonna do that no matter what, that's really not smart. I should probably do it when it's good and not do it when it's bad and ultimately if you have a diverse selection of money making methods you can definitely kind of hop around make it more entertaining more engaging uh, because doing the same one constantly definitely isn't fun the more you have the more you're going to kind of be motivated to do them so that is going to be it for me today though hopefully you guys did enjoy the video and enjoyed the tips in general if you have any tips that you want to tell people as well leave them down below in a comment and i'll make sure to heart the ones that i think are good in addition to that Make sure to leave a like if you liked and subscribe if you want to see more as soon as I go live. With that said, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh...